Hi guys, it's Ross from Youth Football Fund and today I'm joined by a very special guest, David Duke, MBE, who is the founder of Street. David, thanks for coming on. How are you? I'm good. All things considered, you know, it's a, it's a tough time for everyone. Um, but yeah, I'm okay. You know, I'm, I'm keeping busy. I'm fortunate. I'm, I'm kind of still working each day and stuff like that. So that's keeping me kind of focused and stuff like that. But yeah, I'm looking forward to getting out of, out of lockdown um, and start to kind of get back to some sort of normality. But apart from that, I'm okay. How's yourself, all right? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Same again, just getting a bit bored of this repetitiveness all the time. It's just the same old, same old. But we move yeah. forward and we adapt. Exactly. exactly. So let's get right into the questions. First of all, for those who don't know you, can you let people know who you are, your story and a bit about Street Soccer Scotland? Yeah, so I'm the founder of Street Soccer Scotland, which is a social enterprise and charity which was set up in 2009 to use football as a, a way of kind of bringing people together and providing access to support. Um, the, originally in 2009, it was it was mostly focused on, you know, things such as homelessness and, and mental health um, and using football as a way for kind of people who are often isolated just to kind of be able to come together, you know, make new friends and have a wee bit of structure, a wee bit of purpose. You know, um, and the story behind it came from my own experience of homelessness. Um, you know, had a difficult start as a kid, as, as a young person. Mm. Um, but it was football that kind of got me out of it and got me, brought opportunities into my life and brought role models into my life, similar to, you know, yeah. ma many young people just now, you know, and, yeah. and what they rely on in football, you know, it's role models, yeah, it's teammates and stuff like that. And, you know, when you're going through difficult, times such as homelessness or mental health then it can be quite lonely you know so yeah. there's no greater no greater sport i know of uh, bringing people together than football yeah so in october 2020 liverpool and scotland captain andy robertson joined the charity as an official ambassador yeah how important was that for the growth of the organization it, it was it was amazing it, i mean it was great andy's such a good guy you know he's he's very passionate about giving back um he's got his own charity ar26 mm -hmm. um which is kind of aim, aims to kind of support young people and 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 children across scotland and giving people a chance and, yeah. and when andy came on board we were all delighted you know we were very fortunate to have sir alex ferguson uh, involved yeah. from kind of day one he was our kind of founding ambassador um you know, Sir Alex is such a, you know, kind of global, global name, but in Scotland, yeah, you know, if you're a football project, you know, there's no great, it's, it's hard to find yeah. better than um, Sir Alex. But, you know, Andy came on board, he's, you know, current Premier League champion, recently won the Champions League, uh, captain of Scotland. So, he, I mean, he, he's, 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 he, he, he himself is a, an icon globally now, but yeah. he's a good guy and he, and he, and he understands the power of football and he's happy to help so we were absolutely absolutely delighted that he could get involved um and we look forward to working with him in the future yeah that's great so looking at the biggest topic over the past year coronavirus has been a strange time for everyone but what were the challenges and opportunities that street soccer Scotland faced and how did you adapt them well the, you know the, the first challenge was you know our organisation was set up to bring people together, yeah. you know, so it was almost like everything went into reverse. Um, but, you know, the first thing as an organisation or the leader of the organisation had to do is speak to my team and make sure that everyone was OK in terms of the staff team, the volunteers, the coaches, um, yeah. and quickly put together a plan where we could still provide support for our players um, during, during these times, you know, because for, for many players, they, they rely on that structure, they rely on that, you know, that purpose, you know, going yeah. to football twice a week and accessing the support services that run, run alongside that. So I think, you know, what we had to do is kind of come up with a plan where we could still make sure that our players were safe and healthy and, and, and secure during this time. So we came up with various things to, to kind of do that, you know, from, you know, some of our, we, we were delivering food, packages across yeah. communities and housing housing supplies and products 
Um, we had a hardship fund for people who needed to access a bit of extra cash. Yeah. And then we created a series of online sessions, you know, and chat sessions and uh, one-to-one -one sessions and stuff like that, just to kind of pe keep people connected. And as I say, as you know, as many people will know, you know, everything's been changing so much over the last yeah. year. You know, we went from kind of non-contact sport, which was which was good in the, in, in the sense that at least we could get people back onto a pitch, albeit yeah. without playing the actual game. You know, we could do drills, we could do, do fitness and all that, um, and then working in smaller groups. So we, we've just tried to be flexible and, and just making sure that we're there. I mean, obviously, we're in the middle of lockdown just now, so mm -hmm. every day we've got a couple of different options for players to get involved in, whether it be yoga, what days it today, probably yoga sessions and fitness sessions and we've got chat groups, but then we've got kind of more kind of serious stuff such as mental health support groups and recovery groups. Um, and then we're also trying to encourage people to stay active as well. So we've got yeah, strap challenges running and uh, kind of fitness classes and stuff like that. So yeah, just look, we're, we're all desperate to kind of get yeah. back onto the, onto the pitches. Most of the, the the players who connect with you guys are, you know, mm -hmm. and the sooner we can do that, the better. But obviously, you know, safety has to come first. And yeah, of course. Um, but we are mindful that you know the impact um, of COVID and the restrictions that go away are also bad for your health as well. So we need to make yeah, sure, that, especially mental health. You know, um, but again, hopefully, we can get back out and back playing soon. Yeah, and it looks like you guys have really adapted well, so... Uh. Yeah, that, that's all you can do. I mean, on the positive side, we've found kind of new new ways of working in certain certain things, yeah. you know, so like, you know, our, our mental health support worker is based in Glasgow, but now he can, yeah. you know, because we've been doing Zoom sessions, he's been connecting with players outside of Glasgow as well now, yeah. family and etc. And um, this also gives a, a bit of time because, you know, in normal times, street soccer moves so quickly, right? But yeah, there's so many programs run every day. Sometimes you don't actually get a chance to sit down and plan anything. So whilst myself and other members of the kind of team have maybe not as been kind of moving around as much, mm -hmm. it's given us a wee bit more time to focus on the future and also yeah. try and take on some new projects and looking at where we, where we can go from there. So... Um, at the beginning of the year, we started in London, so we've got Street Soccer mm. London down there now. Yeah. Um, foolishly starting two weeks before a lockdown kicked in, <laughs> um, but again, the restrictions are slightly different down there, and it's mostly yeah. aimed at young people, the project in, in London, mm. so it's you know, aimed at 14 to 18 year olds. Um, but that's that's kind of grown massively over the even during the pandemic, you know. Of, getting over 70 players turning up to an individual session now and it's yeah. all, albeit spread over uh, a few different yeah, course, yeah. pitches and stuff like that yeah so looking forward to the future as you said street soccer scotland recently announced a new hub in dundee and in the announcement video you said it's never been needed more how important yeah. was it that after such a tough year to get that set up well i think it's it's very important you know there's um Community facilities and community centres and sports centres are, are all vital parts of the, of the local community. Um, you know, and, and some, some of these centres are at risk now due, due to the pandemic, you know, you, you know that yeah. yourself. Um, and and we, we were given an opportunity by the, the Leisure and Culture Services in Dundee, mm. who kind of brought this to their attention in terms of the Lynch Sports Centre. It's been there for many years, you know, it's, it's in a... It's in a big community where you know there's a real need for access to support and, and services and, and sports facilities and we were, we were presented with an opportunity we've been trying to create a change center for a couple of years now we we're yeah. kind of working on it in glasgow and edinburgh but we couldn't kind of get it to the next stage through various complications but when this opportunity came to us we, we kind of grabbed it and Luckily, we've got a good team in Dundee, kind of Davey and Scott and Kyle are all kind of local lads there. They know the, yeah. the area, they know the local need. Uh, and we've managed to source some investment, which will see the, the centre transform. Uh, because, you know, it is, it's an older centre and it needs a, bit of, needs a bit of work done on it, you know. But we'll start that work in the next, as soon as the kind of COVID restrictions are lifted, we can get the builders in and, and, and we'll create a... A, a new football facility inside it and a multi-sports facility as well as a, yeah. um, a training hub and community hub upstairs. Mm -hmm. 
Good stuff. So looking forward to the remainder of 2021, what kind of impact do you think the new hub will have on the people of Dundee? I think it will give people a place to go. You know, I think, you know, I think, you know, it's been a, it's been an isolating time. You know, we've all mm. been kind of very much in our own houses and our own kind of local communities. We've been cut off from everybody. And, you know, my experience is, you know, we, we all need, we all need a, a place to belong. We all need somewhere to go. We all need company, you know, um, and, and that's what the change centre will be, you know, it'll, it'll be open to everyone, you know, it's not just for footballers, you know, it'll be open for, there'll be a whole host of kind of um, opportunities coming out of the centre, you know, from kind of yoga classes and, you know, fitness classes and obviously football will be central to all of it, but we'll try and create a whole host of um, things that the community can get involved in, regardless of what age you are or, you know, what your background is, you know, it'll be open to you all. Um, because as I say, when everyone's involved, then everyone everyone wins, you know, and that's what it'll be. And actually, you know, if you ask me this question in kind of six months' time, um, it might look slightly different because what we'll do yeah. is we'll engage, we'll, we'll work with the local people, you know, we'll find out what people need. You yeah. know, I, mean, I live I live in Edinburgh, I live in Leaf, uh, and what people in Leaf need is very different to what people in Lockheed. Yeah, so, so it's, it's really important that we. We speak to people locally yeah. and find out look, how can we how can we make this centre fit for purpose for you? How can it serve you and your family? And we'll do our best to try and do that. Good stuff. So finally, to finish off, what are the aims and objectives of Street Soccer Scotland with the Dundee base and nationwide to make a positive change in people's lives? Yeah, I mean our our, our, our tagline is such as positive change through football. You know, yeah. I mean the, the our aim is to kind of reach out to as many people as we can and, and make them feel part of something using football okay. you know um and give giving people access to support access to opportunities access to training um but most importantly always be there so we don't want to just mm -hmm. kind of appear for eight weeks and then disappear you know we want to be a kind of constant for people uh, when, when they need us you know and and as i say we football is our kind of carrot or, or, or tool yeah. Um, but it, it goes deeper than that, you know. We don't we don't hire football coaches. We hire kind of community workers, you know, people who understand people and people who, um, you know, have a real understanding of some of the challenges that people face. You know, football runs through everything. We, our our whole team loves football, of course, but first and foremost, it's just about understanding the needs of the people that we support and the people that we serve. Yeah, of course. I really appreciate you taking your time to come on here and good luck with all your future adventures and the current Dundee one. Yeah, listen, uh, glad to and obviously always keen to get involved with you guys and, yeah, and uh, pass my best to all the, the young players as well because as I say, yeah, young people course. probably had the worst, the worst deal out of COVID in my eyes as well. Yeah. Right, I appreciate your time. I'll see you later. Okay, on. Ross. Have Cheers. A good night. Cheers. Cheers.